I would like to just take a second to, uh, well, no one likes product pitches. No one likes company specific, you know, please buy our stuff kind of things. And the, the, the point of this presentation is to avoid all of that, but it's almost impossible to avoid that because the only company that makes these systems is here in Chandler, Arizona. So, uh, and I happen uh, to be involved in, with them. So, uh, I took all that producty stuff out. And if you have questions about uh, more of these things, you can uh, talk to me after, and we'll have a question and answer thing uh, when we're done. Uh, I have a short and sweet PowerPoint presentation, so uh, I won't I won't bore you to death. Uh, there's a quote I like to use. Um, and it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's an exact quote, but it's, uh, every problem in the world uh, looks like a nail if the only thing you have is a hammer. So what we've provided is another tool for the next generation of IT professionals to accomplish their jobs. And uh, that's why I'm here today. That's why it's important that I, I speak with all of you. Um, about that, because now uh, at the very end of this, at least think of this as an additional tool to accomplish uh, your job functions uh, in the future. Who has heard of a micromodular data center? Anybody here? Ever heard of one? Yeah, that means we have one person, so I'm, I'm kind of doing my job. Uh, so basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's an appliance that has taken all of the attributes of a data center, a big, massive building, and uh, roll them into an appliance, uh, obviously without the office space, but all the cooling, electronic security, fire suppression, all the things that you'd normally find in a building are now uh, in these units. And they're, they all do the same general thing. Uh, they just have differences in size, um, differences in, in hardening and, and physical uh, security and uh, mobility. So it just depends on, on what you want. So everybody knows what a data center is, right? You know, data center, you have electronic motion sensors, continuous video surveillance. It's this big, huge, massive building. Uh, so there are data centers now that cost a billion dollars. It's a billion dollar building. It's 400,000 square feet. Those of you that are skilled at math can do the, cal do the calculation on, you know, what that is per square foot. That's an expensive building. Apple just uh, built one um, in North Carolina, I believe, for a billion dollars. And inside that uh, data center is where all of the critical systems are. Every video that's uploaded to YouTube, every uh, picture on Facebook, uh, every MP3 player that, or MP3 uh, file that you're pulling down on, on your digital media devices lives somewhere. It is delivered, stored, and accessed from these buildings. And you probably won't even see too many of them uh, because they're designed to be nondescript. It's part of the security architecture is not to look like a data center. Uh, necessarily where there's uh, where, where people can um, know where it is. It's just a nondescript concrete building. There might be a lot of cooling towers or a lot of generators, but that's the only way you're going to be able to tell that there is one, unless you work there. So it's a very expensive process. It can take years to build. It always takes a design firm, an engineering firm to figure it out. You have to do computational fluid dynamics to figure out the air flows within the computer systems. It's a very expensive endeavor, and it's the reason it's so expensive. It's the reason why the data center hosting and co-location market is exploding right now, because people don't have alternatives. Either they can spend a huge amount of money building their own data center, like this, or they can rent spaces in other people's data centers. And now people are building data centers just to have space to rent. They don't actually have anything to do with IT. They just have space and uh, reliable power and cooling. They're called co-location facilities. I don't know if is anybody familiar with co-location facilities and what that means. And you, know, you rent out racks of equipment, and they charge you for electricity and bandwidth. And sometimes they give you equipment. Sometimes you buy it. Sometimes you supply it. So what are the attributes of a micromodular data center? For you to be truly a mini data center, you have to have all the attributes that our a data center brings. So you know, um, onboard cooling. All data centers have cooling. Micromodular data centers have cooling. Um, Something that you, we provide that data centers don't have is mobility and uh, the ability to relocate the entire system. Shock and vibration isolation. In data centers, uh, they do earthquake stabilization and, and, um, and, and, and stabilize the entire building. Uh, we do the same thing uh, in, in uh, our data centers as well. 
onboard fire suppression systems. In a data center, you have so many watts, megawatts and megawatts of power being concentrated into a tiny space, you have to take special uh, fire suppression um, technologies into account. And you have, to, you have to deploy them in order to uh, reach you know, proper building code. And um, for us, we have that on the system itself. We have that on the appliance. Um, it's a completely sealed system. Just like a building provides environmental protection for the computer systems and all the critical infrastructure, we also provide protection. And I, 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 I'm, I'm stumbling over the word we because I, I promised myself I wouldn't get this into a company pitch, but like I said, since we're the only people that do it, it's kind of hard. Please forgive me. Um, security encryption. You know, uh, in data centers, security is paramount. And you have to know who's accessed what, when, and where. In order for you to be uh, a micro data center, again, you have to have those attributes on board the appliance. And scalable. Uh, that's something that data centers currently in their brick and mortar fashion do not do. They do not scale well. The cost for your first server might be $200 million. That's not very scalable. So when they build data centers, they kind of build it and hope people will come. And, you know, uh, God help you if your business model is wrong. So there's an industry change happening right now. Uh, you know, we have the data center facility there, and that's the way it's been done for 60 years. Since the first uh, Univac computers were built, there was a massive building wrapped around that thing to make it function. And then about 2005, 2006, um, containerized data centers came about. The first one being um, Sun's Black Box was the first heavily marketed uh, containerized data center, and it had uh, 280 kilowatts of, of IT power. Uh, it had, I believe, eight or 12 computer racks with its own heat exchangers, and you plug it into a massive cooling plant, and now you have a containerized data center in a shipping container. Now, that's considered modular and mobile. It's still, you know, 20 or 40 feet long and still weighs you know, 70,000 pounds, but that is still mobile and modular compared to a building. So inside here, you have all the kind of features we just talked about, but it's in a large form factor. It's in a shipping container that uh, is scalable and easy to use if you're a Fortune 100 company. If you have the ability to spend, you know, a couple million on the container and a million bucks on the chilling plant that it connects to, then this becomes a very, uh, in, a very efficient and cost-effective way to deploy IT equipment. Because then you just pour a concrete pad and have these things sitting in a warehouse, no environmental control at all because everything is containerized. We think that's a great idea. We think that the containerized data centers, like from HP here, are going to fit in certain models of business. And the next evolution of that containerized idea the micromodular data center is going to fit into all the applications that those containerized systems will not fit. In this case, it is now one 42U rack of IT equipment at a time. Does not require water cooling to uh, deploy. It means that if you lease one of these units, your startup cost goes from $200 million for your first server to, you know, Maybe 20, 30 grand if you want to buy a generator and a UPS to go with it. Now this system means that you have an alternative to hosting. You can also use this system to build out hosting space or computer space for people, but you can also use it to provide an alternative. Inside is just a standard 19-inch rack. Standard IT equipment that's designed to be cooled from front to back, including the most uh, dense solutions, all of the the, uh, the blades that are out there with the you know, 240 core blade systems that are out there that tax the most uh, powerful uh, cooling systems in the world uh, can be handled by these systems because they focus all the cooling on the equipment. There's no waste. I'll give you an idea of scale of what we're talking about because I know that uh, you know, a lot of people come from the PC world and uh, there isn't an, a clear understanding of what big iron IT and big iron uh, data center equipment is. So that's kind of just an example 
you can have over a thousand cores inside of one rack unit. And you can have thousands of rack units inside a data center. If you look at that picture on the far lower right there, that's just the cooling towers. That's just the amount, that's the amount of heat that's put out by these systems. You know, the average American home, if you were to turn all of the electrical systems on, if you turn the oven on, turn the AC on, turn the microwave on, the washer and dryer on, that pulls about five kilowatts, five. That one rack can have 40 kilowatts in it. That's in 10 square feet. So the total heat output of, of, of a home times eight, eight homes in 10 square feet. That's the kind of stuff that we're talking about here. Again, a tool, I mean, not every, there's not a silver bullet for everything. People are always gonna want their large fortresses, their massive uh, brick and mortar structures where they can bring their customers in and they can feel safe about the uh, nuclear bomb proof nature of where they're keeping their stuff, where they're keeping their equipment, where they're keeping their data. And we can do that too, but there's a new thing that's happening, cloud computing and utility computing, where it's all about just how many cores and how much storage can I deploy for the least amount of cost, the fastest way possible, for the least amount of money up front. And it can sit in a dark room, nobody ever sees it, and you sell capacity on the internet. That's where we really play, is in the utility computing department. This micromodular topology lets you scale in such a granular, tiny fashion that now you can control every tiny little aspect of your operation. And it lets you build out a data center without a design team. If you think about a build for a building on a large scale, it's more like a glorified shipping and receiving event than it is a big, massive uh, you know, construction project. Now, I know that uh, when I was introduced, we talked a little bit about the green aspect of it. And I'm kind of downplaying the green aspect of it because when I talk to people about green, it's almost like their ears shut off because it's so uh, overdone. Everything is greenwashed, you know, hey, we're here, check out this lead, lead acid battery. It's green because we, you know, made the sticker out of bamboo. It's green now, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, it's still 20 pounds of lead. So, sorry, it's, it's, it's kind of a hot button for me, but uh, there is a, definitely a green aspect with what we're doing, but we don't make our stuff out of bamboo. It's really about bottom line. In the IT, in the IT world, uh, electronic greenness is really about efficiency. It's about how many more ones and zeros can you produce, store, or transmit per watt that you consume, and that is your operational budget. Data centers will move their entire operation, spend hundreds of millions of dollars, just to get one or two cents uh, per kilowatt hour cheaper electricity. Because it pays itself, the entire cost of the move pays back in a year because they plant themselves next to a hydroelectric plant. That's how important power efficiency is. Well, how much energy would you waste if you cooled your entire home down to keep a jug of milk on the counter cold? Everybody, you know, we all live in Arizona. What happens when you set your your uh, temperature down to 50 in your house. What's your electric bill like? It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, it would break the bank. Well, that's what's happening to data centers now. It's breaking the bank. They're becoming too expensive to operate, and so people aren't doing them. So they're going to co-location centers where those data centers have been built by highly skilled people to operate efficiently. With our system, or with a, I'm sorry, a micromodular data center system, <laughs> It's hard to do, really, uh, to, to, to divest myself from, from, from the two things, the company versus what I'm showing you. Uh, it comes pre-engineered, best practice efficiencies built in. So we do the equivalent of taking that milk and putting it into a refrigerator. So now imagine your refrigerator's power consumption compared to the power consumption of your entire home being chilled. That's what uh, data centers do now, is they basically cool their entire environment down, all the free air, all the massive amounts of cubic feet of air that aren't doing anybody any good, they, they cool it too. And they overcool it so that by the time that cool air gets to the equipment, it's useful to cool that equipment down. And they waste a, a tremendous amount of electricity. Our systems are focused and deliver that cooling at about a 90 to 98% efficiency. 
The standard kind of efficiency in a data center that you'll see is uh, about 20, 30 percent. 